Hi guys, greetings from Bulgaria. Uh, there were uh, a few weeks here, uh, national holidays, where we need to spend time with our families. This is why I missed one week of recording new video. However, I'm here ready for our 10th video from our Selenium 4 course. So let me share my screen. Until now, we talked about uh, how to upgrade in the first video uh, about how to upgrade from uh, Selenium 3 to Selenium 4. Then we talked about the new relative locators. Then if you missed the video about uh, the new initialization scripts uh, in from DevTools, check it out. Uh, there I uh, show you how you can um, in the test show notifications and uh, highlight the elements. Then we talked in depth about the new Selenium ID next generation and a little bit about the new architecture of Selenium Grid. Um, then we, uh, in the rest of the videos, we are uh, looking into the new Chrome Developer Tools protocol integration into Selenium 4. First, uh, we saw uh, and talked about geolocation testing in the many aspects uh, of it. Then we talked in depth about responsive testing, troubleshooting tests, and how to capture networking traffic. And uh, maybe a related video was to uh, how to do uh, and capture performance metrics and uh, do performance anal um, analysis of your website. And, um, you know, uh, in, 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 in this video now, we are going to talk about uh, network emulation and how to simulate network speed. So it's kind of related. And by the way, thank you for climbing the test for this uh, opportunity for this awesome channel and videos. Uh, if you missed uh, some of the videos, check it out. There are nine of them. Uh, and uh, I suggest you to watch them. Also hit the ring bell and subscribe to the channel to receive many other awesome videos each week. Uh, and also don't forget that uh, many of these topics uh, on the Lambda test blog, uh, they are related out articles about them. Uh, so check them out. Now, up to the topic about uh, network emulation using uh, Chrome Developer uh, Tools protocol. Um, you know, before showing you the, um, uh, the actual uh, Java code that we use in Selenium, I want to talk about first why we need to simulate um, uh, and emulate the network, right? Um, so now, uh, first, uh, if you if you need to do this kind of a uh, testing, uh, you need to prepare yourself. And um, you know, uh, you know, many websites use this analytics uh, for capturing uh, how many users are there uh, per month visiting your website. Uh, where they come from, uh, what are uh, basically, uh, whether they use mobile or desktop, what are the browsers, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, this is uh, the analytics from uh, one of my uh, test websites, right? Uh, um, and here we are checking the analytics for the last month. And uh, this is a nice place to see, uh, the first thing is maybe to, to check the country, right? Uh, because uh, when, when you check um, where your users are coming from, uh, then uh, in, in a minute, I'm going to show you another website so that we can uh, check what is the expected uh, network speed in this country. And this means that, for example, if your main um, country target is Australia, then you need to check what is the network speed speed in Australia. And uh, then uh, probably we are going to um, simulate this particular speed because here, for example, in Bulgaria, we have really high speed internet, but uh, in some more remote countries, uh, especially if you use mobile, uh, things can get uh, another way around. So you need to simulate this. And now when we saw uh, the countries here, um, then there is another website called, there are many other uh, websites that can uh, show you uh, such data, but Speedtest is one of the most uh, popular, at least out here. 
um, there is this app that can measure uh, your current uh, speed. And uh, I guess because of that, they capture some um, traffic information and they have statistics about the different countries, right? And uh, for example, here, if we search for India and uh, if we open it, you're going to see the average uh, download speed uh, on mobile. Uh, it's uh, relatively much slower compared to US or Bulgaria, for example. And uh, there is a huge latency, right? So uh, we'll have to uh, simulate this. Um, and if we need to uh, talk about, uh, as you'll see, um, in Chrome Developer Tools, uh, if you watch some of my other videos, you know that Chrome Developer Tools protocol, they have really nice documentation here um, regarding uh, all the different options. Um, really, not all of them are exposed to the protocol in Selenium 4. However, um, we can send uh, some commands even if there isn't a particular method uh, special methods uh, exposed uh, in the binding, right? Uh, as you'll see, uh, we have these emulate network conditions. We have a method for it uh, in the Java binding. Um, uh, so probably uh, we will use it. If you check the official Selenium documentation, uh, as we talked in the first videos, uh, we have two protocols, bidirectional API, that it's the suggested one uh, to be used because it's shared across uh, different browsers like Chrome, Firefox, and others. Uh, this will be the future. Um, and uh, they already uh, have some stuff like uh, network interception. However, uh, they don't, as you can see, they don't have anything here about network emulation. And they have only a few stuff about from developer tools, and there isn't anything about uh, emulation uh, of networks. Um, however, we have this option here um, in the network domain, right? If we enable the network domain, we can emulate the network. Uh, emulate. And emulate network conditions. And as you can see here, uh, we can basically test uh, offline how our website is uh, behaving offline. In a minute, I will explain what this means, uh, why. Uh, I, I know that it can uh, sound strange how our website can work offline, but I will explain in a minute what are these applications. Uh, but as I said, um, maybe the three core parameters for uh, network conditions are download speed, the upload speed, maybe the download is uh, most important when you, when you test the, um, the, uh, the speed of your website, the performance, and then the latency. What is the latency? Um, maybe one really good book about this is called High Performance Browser Networking. And um, this book is explaining exactly this. Uh, there is a whole chapter, the seventh chapter, dedicated to mobile networks. And the book states that the problem with high performance is almost always tied to latency. We usually have plenty of bandwidth, but the protocols get uh, in the way. Uh, just a quick example, for example, for 3G, uh, the download rate, the data rate, is between 0 0.5 up to 5 megabits per second. While in 4G, it's like uh, 10 times more. It's between 1 and 50 meg megabits per second. And the latency uh, in 3G is between uh, 100 and 500 milliseconds, while in 4G is less than 100, right? It's much, much better. Um, why this is important? Um, it's connected to, uh, first, how we can test this. Uh, if you open, for example, uh, here I opened YouTube, right? In YouTube, uh, we can open uh, Chrome Developer Tools. We did this many times. 
And here, uh, at, uh, when you click here uh, on this toggle, uh, mobile emulation, right? Here, you can simulate this network emulation, right? Uh, here, I can click on mid-tier mobile. And as you can see here at the bottom, this is fast 3G. And on purpose, I can check here whether I disable the cache or not. If you remember from the last video uh, with, with code using the from developer tools, we can simulate disabling and clearing the cache. This is really important. Uh, if you watch my previous video there, I shared uh, that from uh, our, my company is working on a, one of enterprise project where we have to do this kind of performance measurements. And there we hit this problem with the cache, right? That, for example, on the test environment, the cache is disabled. And um, you know, when you compare uh, two different solutions uh, built using different technologies, uh, it can really mess up the comparison. So you have to test uh, really how your website is behaving when uh, the cache is enabled or disabled. Uh, and especially uh, when you disable it the first time, you will see uh, for uh, one or two users, uh, how for the first user that it's hitting the, the endpoint in particular country, uh, how fast it will be, right? After that, it should be faster. Also, there is another uh, way for speeding this up, depending whether your website is hosted in some of the modern clouds uh, and whether it's using the CDN, the CDN basically uh, this type of service um, have many different data centers across the world and um, is providing the website uh, all of its files to the user that from the uh, nearest uh, data center, right? For example, if you are in Australia and you hit the website, if I have uh, in South Asia a data center, it will be much faster compared to uh, sending you all of these files from Europe, for example, right? Uh, this is the purpose. Anyhow, you can simulate here. Uh, let's see if I refresh now, uh, you will see that uh, the website is loading much, much slower when I'm disabling the cache and simulating with uh, 3G. And uh, by the way, uh, YouTube, Gmail, uh, you can test them even. Uh, when you're offline. Maybe you should know, but uh, here, this is one of my uh, test accounts in Gmail. Uh, actually, Gmail is progressive web application. In a minute, I will explain uh, what they are, but I can test them. When you are offline, you can still check your, uh, your mails, right? Because actually they are downloaded uh, on your machine. Um, and let me explain what the progressive web apps are. Uh, there is a really nice uh, website uh, that uh, Google built. It's called web.dev. Um, and also they have a checklist for progressive uh, web apps, what they are. Um, and actually the, the progressive web apps are uh, web applications that are uh, like regular web pages or websites, but they can appear uh, to user like uh, traditional applications or native mobile applications. Basically, uh, if you install them on your uh, mobile device, even if they're uh, using you know, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, whatever, they work like a native app. And um, the application uh, type attempts to combine features offered by most modern browsers with the benefits of mobile experience. And uh, if we check this core websites checklist, um, maybe there are several important parts. Um, it should work for every user. It should be responsive. So you can use the responsive stuff that I showed you in the previous video um, provided uh, by the from DevTools and the Lambda test platform. It should be connectivity independent. What this means is that it should be able to work offline like this, because when you're on, um, your mobile device, uh, many of them you don't have a network, right? Or it's too slow. And this is why we need to check 
whether uh, this application works offline or not. And we can simulate that uh, using uh, from DevTools protocol. Also, it, uh, as I said, it should uh, look like it should be upright. And uh, in, in the case of uh, YouTube, uh, there is uh, really uh, one important thing about uh, progressive apps. And basically, you are allowed uh, to install them directly from the browser. I can click here to install it. And uh, it's the same on your uh, mobile device. Actually, another popular um, progressive web app is the Starbucks app, and you can install it on um, your uh, mobile device. And uh, they should be safe, uh, like uh, always should be HTTPS, they should be search friendly, engageable, linkable with easy installation with this button here. In a minute, I'm going to show you quickly how, uh, how uh, when you install it, how you can pull it from a uh, web driver. Uh, but again, how this works, uh, if we return to, for example, Gmail, uh, again, uh, you can go to application and uh, there are two important uh, files. The first one is the manifest file. Uh, here we don't have one, but I think we have one for YouTube. Uh, here it is. The manifest file basically that is the file within the progressive web app that describes that, provides metadata specifics uh, like icons, splash screens. And then uh, the, the most important one is the service worker. Uh, they're essential and act as a proxy service that sits between the web application, the browser, and the network when available. And uh, they're intended, uh, among the other things, to enable the creation of effective offline experience, intercepting uh, network requests and take appropriate action based on uh, whether the network is available or not, to data assets regarding the server. And uh, they will also allow access to push notifications and background sync APIs. APIs. Um, and actually, if you're curious about them, uh, they're part of HTML5 APIs. Uh, here is the Mozilla NDN web docs. Um, you can check this really awesome tutorials here, how this works. But basically this is like a background thread on your web browser where uh, when the websites detects that uh, you are connected to the internet, it will download uh, and update many of the files, JavaScript files, HTML, et cetera. And this is how, um, the Gmail stuff here is working, right? And um, many often uh, these background threads, they're uh, populating the local storage here. As you can see, uh, my browser, my web app is storing uh, the emails and uh, the other info. Here in the local storage, uh, in the index database, uh, and when I'm offline, it's actually reading from these storages here. This is how it works. Um, and this is why it's important to test it, to test whether it's offline or not. Um, yeah. Uh, now, maybe it's time to uh, talk about how we can um, test in Java code. In Java code, uh, here it is. Yeah, by the way, uh, in the links below in the description, uh, you will find uh, all the source code uh, as part of the GitHub repo, repo. You can uh, clone it, you can play with it. Uh, again, um, I, uh, if you remember the last time we were uh, going through um, this to do uh, MVC application, just quickly, I'm going to show you uh, what we did. This to do MVC application is awesome because we have. Uh, one single to-do application uh, pre-written in uh, all of these uh, technologies, right? For example, no out yes. And uh, we can stay by milk, uh, by coffee, etc., etc. We can cross it, we can disable it. And this is what my test is doing. Um, the thing that I did is that the last time uh, I prepared 
J unit um, J unit test that it's uh, using it's data driven, passing the technology, and then we're starting the DevTools protocol here. And um, in order to simulate, actually here, we are navigating to the website, opening the specific technology, and then we are adding uh, 100 items so that the test is longer, so that we can um, capture performance metrics that uh, we can check later. Then we are uh, adding some of them and checking them. And then I'm printing uh, the performance metrics while I'm getting. Um, maybe another thing that you can do, um, as I said, uh, there isn't the documentation, but it's quite easy to emulate uh, the network conditions the way I showed you in the DevTools. Um, here, you just need to create a DevTools session. Again, don't forget to wrap it into a try book uh, because you need to close it in the end. Um, otherwise, if you have many tests re relying on the uh, DevTools protocol, maybe over time, there will be problems, especially if you run them on the grid. Uh, so we get the DevTools, we create the session. Then uh, don't forget that first, uh, this is regarding the performance, but right now we are talking about the emulation of networks. So you need to send a network enable command. And uh, if you hover, uh, you can see that here we have max total buffer size, max resource buffer size, and max post data size. For now, it's completely fine uh, to provide optional empty. Optional, uh, you, you can check the documentation uh, that I showed you in case this doesn't work for you and check what these parameters means. But the important part here is that this command here, uh, network dot emulate network conditions. Uh, again, if you need to um, test uh, such progressive web application, uh, especially in offline mode, this means that uh, at least once you need to uh, go to it, uh, do particular actions so that the background thread can download the different resources. And don't forget that actually um, in WebDriver, we're uh, always starting a clean session of the browser with clean um, with clean uh, web storages, right? This means that in a single test uh, or in a single browser instance, you have first to visit the website, do some actions, and then call the dev tools here, and then stop uh, and work in offline mode and do some actions to verify that your website is working uh, okay in offline mode. Then, uh, as I said, you can set the latency, the double throughput, and the upload throughput that you can get uh, from the speed index uh, based on the country uh, where you want to check. Uh, and uh, here, of course, as optional, you can say what is the connection type similar to the one that we suggest in the drop down. This is uh, what we do here. You can combine it again with uh, uh, you know, the different performance checks that we did here uh, in the previous chapter, uh, especially the one about uh, disabling the cache. Um, actually, it was here in the capture traffic. Uh, so actually, you can combine it here with the um, when you capture the different responses uh, right here, here we capture the responses if you, again, again, we need to enable the network. And then in this synchronized list that it's thread safe, we capture all the responses. Later in these assert methods, uh, we can get from the response, the time, the time and the response time. This means that when you, uh, simulate different networks, you can check uh, that uh, the response time is between particular thresholds, right? This is one of the things that we can do. Also, you can check whether they are served from the cache or not. And uh, of course, you can clear uh, or disable the cache. Again, this is really important uh, when you do performance checks. 
And uh, maybe uh, another thing that you can do in your tests, especially here in the network, is that you can use the timeout annotation uh, in JUnits. And uh, for example, for slowest networks, uh, you can say that please uh, fail the test uh, if it's above particular execution time. Uh, so you can combine them. And uh, lastly, if you need to uh, execute your uh, tests uh, in Lambda tests in the cloud, uh, we can do uh, two things. Uh, the first thing, as I said, especially about the uh, even here in, in, in the White House uh, tab in the DevTools, we can generate a report whether uh, our progressive web app and the performance. As you see, if you check on different mobile screens, etc., check whether it has internet or not. Okay, maybe I have to stop uh, here. Uh, let me refresh it. Yeah, the White House needs an internet. Uh, and now I will generate the report and it will give me uh, white again white with the performance. It will give me a number about the progressive uh, web app checklist and it will give me some suggestions. Uh, sometimes uh, here, as you can see, the, 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 the metrics here. We can get the same metrics uh, from the Lambda tests. Uh, in the Lambda test here uh, works. And if you open, um, actually, if we open Lambda tests, capabilities generator. Uh, in the advanced configuration, you will see uh, maybe one useful thing is to enable network works. Uh, it can help you again to see the timings of the different requests and check the timings, especially, uh, so you need this network set to true. Um, then there are two ways how to emulate the network, even three ways. Um, keep in mind that, uh, especially in the clouds so like Lambda test, um, uh, check the video about geolocation testing, but when you enable the geolocation testing that it's specific to the platform, to the Lambda test platform, you really run your tests uh, from the real, uh, for example, Australian network. And you will see the real speed there without, even without the emulation, right? So you can run the test from uh, different edges of the world, uh, which is a good thing. Anyhow, you can still uh, do some kind of an emulation. There are two ways, as I said, you can put here uh, in the Lambda test options, uh, in the capabilities network to true. This is the first thing. Then you need to enable the uh, Chrome developer tools to true to use uh, version four. Then if you remember, we used Augmenter so that it can add the dev tools to uh, the remote web driver class. And then after that, uh, we are just above uh, use the dev tools the way we did uh, in the regular tests. Uh, the second way, uh, that wasn't part actually uh, of this uh, uh, capabilities generator, uh, is that if you check the docs and go to test capabilities, you'll see that we have network throttling. And actually there is a built-in way, even without from developer tools uh, in Lambda tests where uh, you can check or uh, basically you say network throttling and um, you can pick uh, one of these conditions here and they will simulate these particular speeds here and latency. Uh, so this is perfect, right? Uh, and you can do this even with JavaScript. Uh, so there are basically two ways. It's up to you what to use. Um, the, the great thing about uh, the, the native option is that actually you can use it with uh, not only with Chrome and Edge, but with Firefox and other browsers too. Um, yeah, I think uh, this was uh, what I wanted to show you uh, in this particular video.
Uh, thank you for watching. If you have comments, uh, put them below. Also, don't forget to download the uh, source code, hit the like button and share the video. Um, also, don't forget to check the land of this blog. And um, by the way, there will be one bonus video about test results and uh, uh, reporting and analysis of failures. So uh, subscribe to the channel and wait for it. And don't forget to get your uh, JUnit and Selenium certification on the Lambda Test website. Thank you. See you in the next video. Thank you.